What's happening, family? Welcome back to another episode of Let Us Tell It. I'm one of your hosts, Marcus Tanksley, a.k.a. Tank, and the other host is... Goose, man. How y'all doing? Already. Hey, if it's your first time tuning in, we greatly appreciate it. It's a podcast we do every week, and we talk about all the things. We talk about pretty much anything, all the world things. Coming from two black men, two fathers, two husbands, uncles, brothers, African-Americans, Negroes, whatever you want to call us. That's why it's called Let Us Tell It, because that's who it's coming from. Remember, it's Let Us Tell It. It's coming from us, our minds. We think like men because we are men. Damn right. We usually kick this off every week because we got, you know, pressure bust pipes. So we always get something off our chest. Goose, you got anything you want to get off your chest? Yeah, man. These airlines are ridiculous. So we had um, two flights this weekend, and both of them were delayed. And when I tell you, you just feel hopeless in the airport because you can't do shit, nothing. I mean, you can find another flight, another time, but your bags are on the other plane. So you Mm -hmm. have to sit there and you're just sitting there listening to what the airline has to say, like they really telling you the truth. So uh, we we got on, what was it, United? They delayed the flight. Matter of fact, we got on the plane, sat on the plane for probably about 30 minutes to an hour because I fell asleep and then I woke up to the um, pilot saying, hey, we have to deplane the plane. De- mm, yeah, deplane, yeah. is that how you say it? Deplane. Yeah, de-plane. I had to get off, then go to another plane. They said, oh, we have another plane ready for you all. That's what they said. The plane was ready. So everybody like, cool, let's just go to this next gate. We get to the next gate, sit there for about 30 minutes. Then the flight attendant was saying, hey, the plane isn't here yet, but when it comes... Mm-hmm. We'll let you all know. Then we'll let you know when it's clean. Then we'll let you know when the board was like, hold on. Y'all just said it was ready, but it wasn't even ready. It wasn't even ready. And there's nobody, there's no consequence for anybody. Like, nah. I couldn't slap nobody. Nah, it's, like, it's, like, it's, all, it's almost like an NBA ref messing up the game. They can screw up all they want and can't nobody do nothing. Can't do shit. <laughs> and then nah. Delta just delayed a flight, canceled a flight. They gave us 2,500 miles, but... I need a hundred thousand. But yeah, other than that, that, that's what happened. And hey, that's what pissed me off this weekend. I feel you on that. Get this off my chair. I got two things actually. I don't know if y'all can hear it or not. Uh, this is bittersweet. Getting over a cold. Mm. Um, I don't know where. I don't know if it came from Amar. I don't know where this came from. But I decided to go on my herbal, all natural kick. I was taking a uh, elderberry oil, oregano, black seed oil, uh, sea moss. On top of my Mucinex and my Ad, uh, Advil, cold and sinus, I was taking a whole bunch of stuff. Like, and this stuff. thing knocked it up out of me in a day and a half. Really? But I still got some stuff going on in my nose. Yeah. Okay. I, the, the first day I started taking it, like halfway through the day, took it all the way the next day. Next morning I woke up 100%. So was it all one concoction or was it just? Just throughout the day. Oh, throughout the day. Yeah. Oh. That's the thing with, with natural stuff. You got to do it like every three, four hours. I can't stand Kevin. Anyway, uh, having any, I, it's got to be the kids. I don't know where this came from. I was doing perfectly fine. I just got sick out of nowhere. And then we had the golf, the NAACP crap. Kim up. Trails, man. Oh, shit, Goose. It's the Kim Trails. Uh, got hit, so I had to get better for the golf tournament. Um, but that's the other thing I want to get off my chest. I'm going back to doing me. Oh, okay? I, I can't do it. I got to do me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, I don't know who's the kite of the sc- string in y'all's relationship. You know how Kev and Melissa. Oh, Kev yeah. Kev is the Mel's kite, the, Melissa's the string. Mel's the kite. Yeah. Ain't, uh, no. Oh, Mel's the kite. You the yeah. string. Uh-huh. Angel's the kite. I'm the string. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I go to therapy regularly. And, you know, both my therapist, Angel, all these kites, they all tell me, you know, you need to celebrate every single moment. But I want to celebrate the way I want to celebrate. Mm-hmm. So, Angel uh, put us in, as y'all know, I'm NAACP Image Award nominated in the same category as Michelle Obama. Ten All vote. right? Ten vote. By now, you know, we didn't win, mm. which is perfectly fine. I was, excitement, I was excited for the nomination. Mm-hmm. I celebrated the nomination because that's what they've been telling me, celebrate the nomination. Yep. Hey, we in here. That's all that matters. We didn't get it. So, naturally... Before I started listening to everybody on what I should do and how I should carry myself, 
I would have been like, you know what? That's I'm honored to be nominated, mm-hmm. but let me wait to see the final result. Win or lose, then I can celebrate. Okay. But with this particular thing, you can't do that because you have to, uh, you have to uh, campaign. Yep. To get people to vote. Yep. So I, I listened to everybody. I celebrated. Y'all saw I made the shirts. Hey, I'm in here. Mm-hmm. I'm still gonna rock them shirts because I'm still nominated. You can't take the nomination away. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm gonna forever be. NAACP nominated for that particular thing. So I am happy about that. However, I would have liked to know the end result before I celebrate this nomination. So now at this moment, I'm just going to be completely transparent right now. I don't give a damn about the nomination right now because I'm a little salty that I lost. Mm. Let me get through this. Then I can get back to be excited, being excited about being nominated in the first place. But I don't like, I don't like this feeling. Okay. You know, I, I don't let myself climb too high for mm-hmm. a hard fall. I'm like, you know what? Let me let me climb just high enough to where I can land on my feet. Yep. And then after I see the result, then I can climb high. Like, hey, this is where we are. Yep. But I feel like it's because I've been listening to too many damn people. Oh, I'm yeah. going back to doing me. Because this, this is how I got things done. Mm-hmm. is how I'm going to continue to do things mm-hmm. moving forward. Because it's like, you don't celebrate. You you so nonchalant. No, let me just, let me just feel things out first. You celebrate too much. How about that? <laughs> no, and that's like in Angel's industry, they have to. They have to celebrate. Oh, I got this audition. Mm. Oh, I got to do this audition. Mm. Oh, I got a call back. Oh, I got a third call back. Mm. So they got to celebrate all that just to, they didn't pick me. But they had to survive and r- remain sane. They have to celebrate all those little bitty steps ah. to where the more the strings, we mm. come from, we going to celebrate once we find out we got the job. Yeah. So I can't do that with Angel because Angel, she'll do all these and I have to pretend like I'm excited when they, she gets a call for an audition, mm. even though I don't want to. Because I'm like, I'll celebrate when the credits roll after it aired. Yeah. Because I done seen this too many times. You know what I'm saying? I done seen this. I, like, she learned how to deal with it. I don't because that's not the industry I came from. That's not how I deal with things. Because they will, the actors will go to a show. I mean, act in a show episodes and then before it's even aired their part will be cut out of the show angel has been cut out of something that she's already filmed yeah so they've taken complete episodes out that angel was in yeah (laughs) and i'm like i that's so that like i said that ain't part of the thing i I don't like uh to be in situations where i have to be chosen like Mm -hmm. if i'm gonna win or lose something let it be for my own merit for my own ability a scientific Yep. Oh, you crossed the finish line first, so ain't can't nobody doubt that you won a mm-hmm. loss, or you crossed it last, so everybody can see you clearly lost because you wasn't fast enough, because you wasn't strong enough, mm-hmm. not because we hoping on the chance that enough people. I don't want to rely on other people to decide whether I won something or not. That's just me. That's I don't not- know if that's a string thing, an Aquarius thing, a what, but <laughs> that's- a blue collar thing. I don't know. That's just me. I agree with you. I'm just being trans. This is where I'm at right now because I just found out last night. I I like being able to not per se control the outcome, but the amount of work that I put in Mm -hmm. will will benefit my outcome. Yeah. So, um, yeah. When I was in the uh, when I was an electrician, you can't deny that my conduit work looked better than his conduit work. Yeah. You can't deny we wired up more houses than them because we did. Mm -hmm. The numbers is right there, not somebody coming in judging or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's where I'm at. I agree with you. I'm trying to get back to being excited because it is a huge honor. But the way I'm wired, I can't just ignore. I'm the same way. People don't don't like the way I express myself when it comes to certain situations. If I'm not excited, I might be excited on the inside, but I don't want to let you know that I'm excited on the inside. I want to celebrate to myself. Yeah, let me do me. I feel you, Goose. It's it's those women. I got it off my chest. I feel women. Those women in Kev. Yeah. want you to cry at every occasion. But anyway, (laughs) (laughs) let's move on. Y'all see your boy Russell Wilson then left the Broncos. Well, they done let him go. Is it the Broncos? Who is he playing for? I think it's the Broncos. But yeah, uh, they right. got to pay him $34 million. Whew. And he doesn't even have to play for them anymore. And the Steelers are paying him like $1.3 million to play for one season. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
he should have came to Atlanta Hawks, Atlanta Falcons. Russell should have came to Hawks. Georgia. Ain't how, how yeah, he probably let him the Hawks yeah. too. <laughs> Uh-huh. Got, a Bray. got a mean crossover. Oda Bray, he used to play baseball too. <laughs> but I would would have loved to see Russell Wilson in Atlanta playing and your boy Future coming to the games. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. Hey, that would be hilarious. You over clapping and, 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 and South hey, saying this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he did. You have right. to he love him, man. <laughs> hey, and especially if Russell would have came and started winning. Oh, yeah. She, he probably would have made a whole song. You know how the celebrities be sitting on the on the court with their feet on the floor. He was oh. like, he giving everybody a high five, put his foot down when Russell <laughs> walked back. <laughs> oh man, that's I I would have loved that. They should have just made so many tickets would have sold. People would have come from all over to see Russell play with Future in the stands. Yeah, that would have nah, been would, oh. Since that would have been a crazy Super Bowl to go ahead. Since we're on sports, I want to talk about this real quick. Mm-hmm. So, as y'all know, we went to uh, the NAACP, the golf tournament. Oh, yeah. Like celebrity golf tournament. It was yeah. dope. Yeah. It was dope. You look, your boy, I'm new with golf. I don't know what I'm doing. Josh caught one of my worst shots on camera that I had. It, wasn't one, it was one of the worst of, throughout the day. Hopefully, he don't post it, but he probably will, punk-ass little boy. Uh, <laughs> you gonna do it after that comment? <laughs> nah, I'm messing with you. No, Josh, that boy, phenomenal. We was playing. Me, Angel, Josh. We were playing with uh, one dude was like the owner of the golf course. Like they maintain it and everything. The other dude is like, and he like high up in the PGA. Like does both these dudes is elite, right? Uh-huh. Josh is actually Josh could play better than one of the dudes. Pro- maybe. Crazy for red nah, red. Josh was like killing it, right? Look, your boy, I'm new. I'm fresh to golf. I don't know what I'm yeah. doing. I got an injury right now. Look at it. You see how swollen that is right there? What, what is that? This right here? Yeah, I mean, what? You tore muscle? Swinging wrong. I don't know. <laughs> Ego swinging. I'm holding the like I'm a, holding the club a like, a, like a baseball bat. You know how you grip oh, okay. it? okay, yeah, yeah. Apparently, you're supposed to damn near feel like that the club's going to fly out of your hand. Mm. I'm ego swinging, right? I'm just trying to <laughs> smash the ball. Dang. Yeah, I got a golf injury. Anyway. We had a good time. It was a real good time. Me, day. Josh, Angel, we was on the same team with these other, uh, with those two dudes. Mm. Uh, but it was star studded, like a whole bunch of athletes: Matt Barnes, uh, Kevin Garnett, uh, Paul Pierce, Brittany Griner was there. What? Much taller than me. Brittany Griner. Oh, oh yeah, 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 Brittany Griner. Yeah, I was yeah. looking up at that. I think she got like six, eight, six, nine. She, I was like, huh, dang. How about Matt Barnes? He about he tall as Matt Barnes. He's the two times I spoke. This is what this is why I'm telling this story. Mm-hmm. The first time I spoke to Matt Barnes, we I was standing. I don't know who I was talking to, and I seen he was off over here. But you know, I I just ain't gonna walk up and just start talking to people. Mm-hmm. So I was just I'm like, oh, that's my, just thinking to myself as Matt Barnes. All of a sudden, I'm sitting there talking. I feel a tap on my shoulder. He's like. Hey man, what's up? And like you know, grips me up, hugs me. I was like, "Hey man, what's going on?" And I'm looking like you, Matt Barnes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he was mad cool. Yeah. And then I was like, so that inter, you know, interaction happened. Then he walked off, started talking to people. Mm. And oh, it was me, Angel. I think Josh. Yeah, Josh was there, and they didn't see it because mm. I was standing there talking to them. And I was like, "Did y'all just see that?" They was like, "No." So then I seen him later on, and I had to be like, "Hey." You threw me off because I'm a fan, and I didn't realize it was you until yeah. I looked at you, and he just started laughing. He was like, oh, it's cool. So we talked for a couple of seconds. I was like, all right, man, it's nice meeting. I was like, yeah. this dude, cool as hell. <laughs> Mel likes that, him. That, that threw other. me off. I was just like, yeah, yeah dang. But it was it was, star- it was a bunch of actors there, too, but mainly the athletes. I didn't know it was that type of event until we were standing there, and it's like they all rolled together. I'm like, I seen all these people coming down the steps, and you just – you see people that you recognize. Mm. There was one dude talking to Tab and him. I think they knew him long before he was acting. You know, Bel Air, yep. the show Bel Air, the coach, the the one that they that looks crooked, light skinned dude. No, I the basketball coach. There's only one basketball coach. Know. Oh god dang. Yeah, you horrible. Anyway, he was there, and I didn't, I couldn't remember where I knew him from. And uh-huh. I was sitting there, and I seen him talking to Tab, and I was like, something about that dude. I don't like. I don't trust what? him. <laughs> And I told him this after I realized what it was. I was like, oh, he on Bel <laughs> And I told him. Being just, security I said, that means without you, being security. I said, that means you know you, you're doing a good job yeah. if somebody see you in real life. Like, man, I don't like him. Mm. 
<laughs> this man Tank about to get arrested out there. Yeah, but nah, it was a it was a dope event though. It was fun. I mean, you gotta get on the course, man. Yeah, I I didn't go because I ain't want to embarrass none of y'all. You, but, you ain't gonna embarrass nobody. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm like, a pure athlete, man. Whatever I, I put my hands on, I just I, I dominate. Oh, is that right? Mm -hmm. mm, come out there and try it then. There's you. a reason a whole bunch of athletes are horrible at golf because it ain't one of the things they, you think you're going to just dominate. Cool, uh -huh, you're right. That's what I say right before I hit. Uh -huh. Instead of four, school, man. Yeah, I was. Uh, That's why you hurt your I don't arm, know, man. Yeah. You need to. For real. I was, I, was, I was putting too much strength into it, apparently. What is that? That's probably. It's. They have tennis elbow, so it must be something called like golf elbow. That's on the. That's what Chad said, but they was like, "Is it on the back?" I said, "No, it's some. It's right here. It's a muscle, like right there." That's a tendon. That's a tendon. Yeah, yeah I iced it last night when I got home, but I fixed my grip halfway through the day. Mm. I I didn't do. Uh, I got to the point to where I was like, I'll only putt. I'll let them drive and I'll putt, and then once I was practicing on the side, I fixed my grip, so that did help. Like. Thinking through what I was doing wrong, and I was mm -hmm. like working on the swing. I said, "Oh, okay, this feels better. I don't even feel it no more." So then I had to learn that grip. So learning a new grip, have it's like you playing basketball. It's like, oh, I'm gonna play left hand, and I ain't never done it before. <laughs> like, That'd be so. Ugly. That's what that was like. I was like, I was the ball was going left, right. I was digging into the ground. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna figure it out, y'all. Just bear with me. <laughs> Not there with everybody though. Oh yeah, no. It, oh. I, not, look, I have no. I know I'm not. I'm new to golf, uh, and even when I see people that are really good make mistakes, the same mistakes I be making, I have mm -hmm. no ego when it come to golf. I'm like, I'm just gonna look bad. I don't care. That's what yeah. they asked me. So, how you think you gonna do today? I said I'm gonna look real good failing. There we go. That's how you gotta <laughs> look at it. Yeah, Ebony, we probably do an episode out there playing golf. She's talking about uh, come on, let us it, tell it takes on golf. It's fun. Golf. It's a it's a fun game. Bunch we of comedians is out there too. Since uh, Tank ain't on the comments, I'm trying to respond. Oh, you want me yeah, to check Yeah, we, we want Sierra to come back home. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But we'll welcome her back home. Where they live at now? I guess Sierra. Denver, if if they been playing for the Broncos. Oh, uh, what I do, man? This whole time. I made it small. Oh, uh, well, hold on. We gonna move on. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah, I know a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about this kid this high school guy in uh, in Texas. Oh. Um, and I mean, it, we got to talk about the LSU South Carolina fight. Fight? The ladies basketball. I thought they just won the game. South Carolina? That book, that book. You didn't see that fight? No, I didn't. Oh, goose. It's women fight? Women's. For the second time in like the past two weeks. Oh, my goodness. All is, right. it, is Kevin there? Mm -hmm. Is it South Carolina Kev? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So South Carolina, LSU, as y'all know, Angel Reese plays for LSU. Mm -hmm. In South Carolina, apparently there's been a lot of tension, uh, you know, b with the teams. Mm -hmm. And I don't know at what point in the game as well. I don't know if it was before halftime or not. But one young lady is probably I don't know. I'm guessing these heights. I don't know. One young lady is probably like five, six, five, seven. From LSU, and they, you know, they have a little bit of a rough. I think one of them falls, she gets up, kind of shrugs the other girl off of her. Mm. From from South Carolina, she like shrugs her off of her. Mm. Another girl from South Carolina come up, she look like she's about seven six, yeah. and she shoves. She ain't that tall, but she looks that tall. Compared she shoves to five, this girl, six, yeah. She shoves this girl to the ground so hard, Dang. like just. I mean, it was just. It was even if you going protect your teammate by, you know, old girl, like, getting her off of her. Mm. You come over, step between them, and buck up, or, you know, just push her away. But she came over and just – Molly just walk. Just like, looked like she just – it almost looked like she just picked up, threw her to the ground. That's how hard she shoved her. Dang. So, of course, that caused a big ruck because everybody run over. Um, and it's, you know, it was just tension with them. I think a bunch of them got ejected and, uh, you know, whatever. What The girl who got shoved to the ground, her brother jumps down out the stands onto the court. Oh, man. Come Police on. Police get him up out there so quick. Okay. But I get it. <laughs> I'm just saying, though. You Dude, can't. Guy, you, I mean, you see somebody shove your daughter <laughs> that's like two ah. feet tall. <laughs> he was dead wrong. He was dead wrong from jumping on the court. Um, you know it ain't going to be too much. It was like crazy, just that whole thing. But what was funny is uh, – 
at the end when you know they're doing the interviews mm. and they talk to LSU's coach. Mm. And she was just like, I wish she had shoved Angel Reese like that. <laughs> she said, "That's what I do." <laughs> she wanted that smoke. She said, "Yeah, if you gonna show somebody, show them her. Yeah, like, show, the, <laughs> show the one you know gonna fight you." But uh, I mean, it's sad to see. I don't want to see, uh, especially our ladies acting like that. Um, but I don't know. It was just I thought you was gonna. I thought you saw that. I thought you was gonna bring it I up. Didn't, uh-uh. It I was. It, make sure you go watch the clip because it was. It's, it might be tough to find because it's so. It's been a few fights in women's. Women's sports is amping it up. That's what I'm gonna tell y'all right now. It's the chemtrails, <laughs> man. Goose, kiss my it's ass. It's the chemicals, chemtrails, man. They, tra- they making these women masculine. That's you think it's the chemtrails? It was the slave trade that did that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we was in Texas this weekend and uh, Houston, Dallas. We was in Dallas, and they were having um, they it was some type of sporting event going on, basketball or volleyball. Uh-huh. But these women that were in the hotel we were in, man, they were like, they made me look so small. <laughs> it was like Cam Newton fighting those dudes. Yeah. Man, that's what you I like, told hope you. don't nothing go down. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been manhandling, woman handling. <laughs> Get over here, little boy. <laughs> Get out of my way. So those athletes are huge. Women athletes as well, they yeah. they are, but fit yeah, huge, they, not when, flubber. These, these yeah. girls were toned, mm-hmm. six six easy. Yeah, it's crazy it's, when you see them all together. Everybody looks the same size, but then you put somebody oh. normal beside them, or you know somebody. I stand next yeah. to them. <laughs> it's like now what, what happened to Greg? Why he looks so small? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to interrupt you. I thought I, I, that was like the most exciting thing. So I was like, let me go ahead and. Yeah, them girls fighting. I need to see that. I need to. I would like to see this. Uh, what was I about? Oh, I was talking about the Texas guy. Yeah. The Texas young man that had the braids in his head. The judge um, sided with the school, the school system yeah. and said. Mm-hmm. Y'all punished him in the right way. He, was, yeah. it doesn't matter. He should have been suspended because of his hair, yeah, right? The length of it. Okay, so now another judge in Texas um, sided with these Asian um, realtors, right? So these this black um, real estate investors, these black real estate investors, tried to buy a buy a couple of condos in this Asian community, mm-hmm. right? And it's just the Asian community because majority of Asians live there. Yes, and the they promote it as an Asian community. Mm-hmm. They say come where Asians live a simple. You can come live a simple Asian life. So they're promoting it like that. So basically, everybody don't come here. We want Asians, yeah. which is crazy. Now you in Texas? Yeah. You, you got damn you in Texas? Talking about an Asian community. Get the hell out of here with that bullshit. Anyway, black guys, <laughs> black ga- girls, they go there, real estate agents, investors. Hey, we want three of these condos. The realtor says, uh, the community, um, she didn't say mostly Asian. She said the community, are their neighbors and they all know each other. You won't fit in. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So the black investors were like, hmm, we're going to sue you uh, uh, under the Housing Act. Right. Right? Because you're straight up discriminating yeah, yeah. against us because we're black. Right. Clearly, it ain't as big. That's in black and white. Yeah. <laughs> Houston judge says, nope, this is dismissed. You can't prove that. Blase, blase. Um, if you want to get down deep into the nitty gritty of it, go look it up. But that's the sum of the whole situation. I'm saying that because it's that bullshit. That's Texas. I'm talking about That's I, <laughs> you can't say this is a store or this is a place for black people and then when white people come to try to patronize the store and you oh this is only for blacks. That's discrimination. Yeah. Your advertising is discrimination. So I mean, Kev said it. He did, but <laughs> it's for black people it's, anyway. It's for black people anyway. <laughs> but any and everybody can absorb his content. 
You did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of that bullshit. Nah, that's messed up. That's I don't understand. <clears throat> That's why we Dude, need to be racist. Black folk need to, hey man, you can't we, open this store in my we, neighborhood. Technically, we can't be because we were the oppressed. So even if we were acting the same way, we need to be discriminating against yes, other we need people. To, then. We need to discriminate. Check this out. Mm-hmm. We, that happened to us, me and Angel. We was looking for a house. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went to, there's a, uh, this was in, what city was that? So it was out here in the valley. I ain't gonna give too much detail. It was out here in the valley. We went to look at this house. It was like, now this is, we, we like the area. It's nice, it's clean. I'm standing out front and I look and I'm like, I see these people walking, you know, kids up and down the street, dogs. Mm. And I noticed, I was like, oh, it's a lot of Asian people in the area, which, you know, we didn't mind. We go and this is an open house. Or oh, it wasn't an open house. We had an appointment to go look at it because this was like, it's post uh, pandemic. So things are still a little, you know, Mm. Uh, a little iffy, but we had an appointment to go look in the house, so we met the people that own the house. It was an older Asian couple. And we talked to them for a little bit. A little bit of a language barrier. We just let them know we have, you know, four young kids and this, that, and the third, and, you know, we would love your house. So we're looking at it. So we go put in an offer. We're like, we like this house. Mm. We put in the highest bid. Because mm. we was like, because at this point, we had gotten out bid multiple times. We was like, all right, we see what, see what it is. Mm-hmm. We got to go to the top of what's reasonable to us. And they came back and they was like, what's your best and final? So we went up a little higher. And then they was like, they wanted all this information on me. Like, what did I do for a living? And how are we paying for the, the to get yeah. the money? I'm like, and the, our, even our realtor was like, this is weird. Like, if the money is there, it doesn't matter how it's getting paid for. Mm-hmm. He was like, I've never seen people ask these kind of questions unless it was like uh, contingencies and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, so the, but if we can put this down, this much down, then that's the bank's concern, not yours. Yeah. And the bank has already approved. Yeah. So we don't need to prove anything else. So long story short, we found out, really long story short, we found out they took, it was our bid. There was a bid lower than ours uh, with uh, contingencies. We had no contingencies on ours. Were, and then there was a cash offer. Mm. They took the lowest bid, and we found out it was another Asian family. Oh, yeah. I was like, you missed out. I think we were maybe 60000 over them. Yeah. You let that go because you didn't want black people living there? Yep. And that's, that's what I'm telling everybody. I know for a fact. I don't know for a fact. But I bet you, I bet you, every other race tells their children, you can lose at anything, but you will not lose to no black person. And and they make sure that whether we have all the money and the success that we need, they still, you can be upscale citizen, mm-hmm. no criminal <laughs> record, making more money than them, sh- showing that you're prestigious. Yeah, but because you black, they still gonna discriminate against. That's why I don't be, un- man. I, all these stores in these neighborhoods, these Indians, Asians, everybody that ain't of color in the neighborhoods with these stores, should be paying some type of taxes, or we as the community should not allow them to be there. Period, because they don't allow us to be there. Then they got the law. Backing them up when it comes, as you can see in Houston, oh, yeah. the judge is backing them up. Mm-hmm. Man, we need to, I, Look, someday, I mean, somehow. I've told this before. When we were selling our house, houses was getting sold quickly. Mm-hmm. Our house is on the market for, I think, three weeks. And we only got maybe one or two offers that was below what we wanted. Mm. People were coming to look at the house like crazy. Mm. I mean, we would, every day, like two, three People would set appointments because we was always having to leave the, leave the house mm. where I would be getting off work and I had to, you know, wait. A lot of times I would like park around the corner and kind of look to where I could see, still see the house just to see who was coming. To, mm. I'm meddling too. I'm like, who's walking up in the house now, you know? Mm. And we weren't getting nothing. And I'm like, what is the deal? Mm. I walk up in the house and I said, let me pretend like I'm about to buy this house. Mm. So I walk in and I'm looking around. I said, I'd be down. I said, Angel. We need to take these family pictures down. Yep. They walking up in this house and seeing that black people own it. Yep. Goose, I promise you, we took our pictures down on a Thursday. 
by that Saturday that we had four bids. They had a special on that. On the news, this white couple, I mean, this black couple did the same thing. And the appraiser mm -hmm. came in and appraised their house at, let's just say it was 100000 The appraiser, they got another appraiser come in. They changed all the pictures mm -hmm. to the generic white folk. Yep. The, that appraiser appraised their house for $250,000 more. Yeah. I, we, took down, we took down our pictures. We took down the African art. Because we had, it wasn't even a bunch. It was like an <laughs> instrument. A xylophone yeah. that was in the uh, den, and then we had a painting that was up, that was in the living room. I was mm -hmm. like, take that down. That, uh, that, I said, Angel, that African drum over in the corner, we're going to put this in the garage. I said, we're going to, and that's all it took. Man. Boom, 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 boom. Bids. Crazy, crazy. They did. That's why, I, look, I'm at a place. I'm blessed to be in a place now I could do things that I couldn't do in the past. Mm. I love, I thrive off being in restaurants. I thrive off being in uh, establishments where they're not expecting to see me. Oh yeah, I yeah. love it. Yes, when we was at that golf, Monarch Beach Golf Club, mm. pristine. Yeah. They're not used to seeing us. Yeah. I'm waiting to get on the elevator. This is a, I could hear the people talking on the elevator. They mm. were loud, laughing. Ah, elevator stop, door open. It drops dead silent when they see me. I get on there big and black as ever. Yeah. Good morning. How y'all doing? Yeah, that All right. <laughs> get down here and swing these clubs. <laughs> How y'all do? I like that hat. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh-huh. Y'all have a good one. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to be loud. I'm going to make Man. you speak. I'm going to make it uncomfortable. Yeah, I should see. I said, what were y'all laughing about? That's like, <laughs> let's make it up. Let's go all the way there. <laughs> yeah, I should see these people at Delta when all us black folk. Get in there and go into the Delta Sky Lounge. I want to be like, and I'm not a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> they be like, are you are, are you a member of the Sky Lounge? Are you, do you need to, is it, like, are you all together? Are you all, you all have to be together. Like, no, we're all separate. Thank you. Yeah, no, I like, I love it. I love it. Don't nothing warm my heart. Every time I hear about a restaurant, let me go. Yeah. I want to go. I want to be up in there. If it's a group of people sitting at the bar, let me sit between them. I'm going to be loud. I'm going to be me. Go ahead, Goose. We should have uh, forewarned uh, our supporters that uh, it was going to be a short one. Oh, again. yeah, it's going to be a short one, y'all. Uh, we had some things that ran into us filming this, so we probably, I'll give it. We should do one more topic. Uh, TikTok ban. TikTok ban? Yeah. Meaning they're going to cancel TikTok? They trying to cancel TikTok. Oh, please TikTok. cancel TikTok. Man, mail make money off TikTok. Oh, you right. Oh. No, 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 no. I'm thinking of Twitter. I'm thinking of Twitter. Oh, Twitter. No, no. Please ban Twitter. I don't care Leave about TikTok Twitter. alone. Yeah. TikTok, I can I can understand social media, period. I mean, you ban any of these things because yeah. all of them do influence everybody. So that's what the concern is that uh, Asians... The 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 Asian owned company. Well, it's not even the Asian owned company. The guys from Singapore. Oh, that's right. Because the Congress was trying to come at them, talking about they spying. And yeah, yeah. That it, was the dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the trial? Yes. The God guy was dang. like, "I'm Singaporean. Like, I'm not <laughs> from Asia." And the dude, was like, I think the guy was convinced that Singapore or Asia was the same place or something. Yeah, he was asking a question. Yeah. Normal internet question. It's like, yeah. we see that you track IP addresses. Who does that if you're not spying? It was like, we have to. It's like everybody tracks. <laughs> All y'all track us, man. No, you have to in order to, to know where your engagement is. Dang. It's a public information. Anytime I put my information in anything, I get spam. All the time, I get text messages. Oh, all the I get time. non stop phone calls now. Yeah, you if, get, I, if, if your number ain't saved in my phone, I don't yeah. pick up. Anybody ask me for my social security number, I don't give a damn. I give it to you, it's already out there. Yeah, it's I googled your social security number the other day. That's what I'm saying. You google mine, yeah. See, use it to buy some shoes. That's o what, open that's up a line what of that was about. Yeah, mm. they was expensive too. Google yours today, <laughs> buy me some all type of shit. go on a vacation. <laughs> Yeah, you gonna be? I'm, I'm warning I'm in places like, you ain't even. Are you marking the same? Yeah, no, no, no. Sir, you coming with us? You have the right to remain <laughs> silent. <laughs> we they, got him. He fits the description. Look, yeah, <laughs> they look at a picture. They just see Ben yeah. and Ball. Oh, this is yeah, him. I'm like, that, no, this is definitely him. six seven. <laughs> Man, uh, it's camera trickery, sir. You coming with us? <laughs> they can ban it. 
I no, I don't want them to ban it because first of all, my wife make money off that. Uh they that, should that's the only reason. They my should wife shadow make money off they should that. shadow sell it to like an American. But that's what's to probably make gonna it look happen. Like, to make it look like they sold it and it's not theirs anymore. Of course. They're gonna do I don't somebody know if that's what it's called, but that's what they should do. They gonna sell it and like just uh, uh, oil uh, oil uh you gonna you're gonna be the face. Texas. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna be the face of it, but I'm still gonna benefit from it over here because it influences everybody and I mean they yeah. there's no way around it, but I think they're doing yeah, it because of elections and all yeah. that other if stuff. If the world was a the world would be a better place without Twitter. Yeah, tw- Twitter and uh, Lipstick Alley. I did, got it right. Lipstick Alley, right? Or is it Chapstick Alley? It's, it's Lipstick Alley. No, well, it's Glow Stick. Gl- no, it ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> I got it right the first time. Lipstick Alley. All that, all that bad energy on the on them internets. But uh, yeah, ain't nobody. Man, y'all shouldn't ban TikTok. Don't ban TikTok. Um, also. Did we did we say that uh that boy Jake Paul gonna be fighting Tyson? No, that happened the same day that we recorded. It came ah, out that evening. It I'm came out say that it again, evening. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. I got home and I seen it. I said, "Dang, man, <laughs> Jake, man, fight me! Don't man, leave Tyson alone. Fight me, man. You got to come through me first. Then you might be verified. Then I don't. He's look. If he comes out of that uninjured." I would be impressed. I, yeah, I Tyson would. is expert because Jake Paul's what six? Yeah, he's six something. <clears throat> I think he's six foot. He six used. Foot I one. know Tyson ain't what he used to be, but he's still like, he's still in. I feel like in pretty decent shape mm. from what I've seen, uh, and the way he trains. You know, he goes into that mindset. Tyson is an expert at fighting people bigger than him. He probably does better better with people bigger than him because he gets on the inside. If Tyson can good get a good blow, I would be shocked. I would be impressed by Jake Paul if he can walk away uninjured. I want it to be a real fight. When I say injured, I'm thinking maybe a bruised or cracked rib. Like, <laughs> that's what Tyson does. He gets yeah, up yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Jake ain't he ain't really fought nobody. No, his form. I, after watching this fights, I'm like with Goose. I could probably handle him pretty good because this no technique. Like. <laughs> He ain't fought nobody yet, and he yeah. ain't fought nobody yet with the confidence of like, man, I'm a boxer, I will hurt you yeah. type situation. But uh, I'm going to keep on putting it out there in the universe, man. Fight me. 50 million. I need six months. Six six months, training Fighting camp, train. me and Tank, yeah. straight off the rip. However you want to do it, I, I fight you at my weight. I think you about 200. I'm 180. Oh, you in my weight class, Jake. Come on with it. Whichever way we can switch well, nah, it up. I'm well above him, but if when I train, I might drop down to two. I don't know. Either way, man, I want that check. <laughs> don't give it to don't give it to nobody else but me. Uh, I'm gonna end it with this right here, and which is kind of <clears throat> crazy. Y'all seen all these migrants crossing the borders? No one knows why. Everybody's like, "What's this? What's that?" I've been trying to explain what I think it is. And this uh, guy on Instagram explained it fairly well. So everybody now, a day, nowadays, especially children, our children mm-hmm. and the children after them, they're not even looking at trades. They're not looking <clears throat> to be a plumber or an electrician or a postal worker or like they're not looking at the traditional way of making money. They're mm-hmm. all really trying to be entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And that's across the board. So in order for the uh for society to keep you know going around and the government taxing people for uh regular jobs and mm-hmm. 401k's, people taking out money for mortgages, you know, defaulting on that. And that's how banks make money and all that stuff. You need workers to do that. Yeah. And that's what these, that's what I feel like the migrants are coming over here to do is to come replace that blue collar. Yeah, they come to make an honest living. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, 
and but it's it's and that's the way yeah. it's set up for them to come do it now, right? Because social media has taken everybody's mind off of the hard labor type of not even a hard labor, but just work. Period. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> wants to be on the internet or making money off the internet, meaning you know, um, uh, day trading. Oh yeah. Uh, Amazon, uh, whatever. Uh, what you call it? FBA, like there's no. What's FBA? Uh, fulfilled by Amazon. Yeah. Uh. Fulfilled by Amazon. The uh, drop shipping stuff. Oh, okay. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what that's what I feel like. They're coming to replace. Yeah. All of those jobs, and then on top of that, they're going to uh, become voters and. Um, hardcore religious American citizens that's gonna mm -hmm. oh and then he said they're gonna join the army the military people ain't joining the military now they're gonna join the military like they're gonna fulfill everything that yeah. our the I generations mean, below us aren't doing right now that thing is that's what this country was built on yeah you know the early settlers and all this they were immigrants yeah <laughs> the only pe land this people uh, only people that belong to this land are the Native Americans. Uh, but that's true. So this almost it's just it's making same. a full it's no, circle. It's no different from what has the way America was started. Yeah, damn right. It's, it's the same thing. But now they now it's illegal. They they or they, at least they try to make it illegal. Yeah. But this is what I say, man. People, uh, you know, me and Goose, we preach it all the time because we came from the trades. There's multiple trades that you can get where you can make athlete money. Mm. I'm talking about people pulling in three, four, five hundred a year. Mm -hmm. um, there's multiple trades where people do that. Um, even if you're not pulling in that, you can still make really good living. There's so many different, you know, we always talk about the main, you know, the electrician, the carpenter, the plumber, HVAC, those expanded different things. You got elevator technicians. There's only five major elevator companies in the world. Yep. Think about that. There's only five major ones in the world. You got ThyssenKrupp, you got Kone, Schindler, Otis, uh, Mitsubishi, and what? Otis. Otis. Those five. You got mm -hmm. other companies, but they're really small. You get a job with one of those companies, you're going to get somewhere posted. You're going to get somewhere locally because the elevators are everywhere. Elevators and uh, what they call it? Escalators. Escalators and all that. All those mm -hmm. are lift components. They even have to put them in temporarily on construction sites. Um, <clears throat> that's just one. You and these people make really good money. Mm -hmm. We talked about on on the HVAC side, the uh, uh chiller technicians. Mm -hmm. A chiller is basically an enormous AC unit that cools off commercial buildings. Yeah. Um, there's technicians that work on this stuff. There's technician emergency generators, basically a big ass motor, mm -hmm. caterpillar. Again, Mitsubishi, you got all of these massive generators there's technicians that have to maintain not even fix it these things have to be maintained daily weekly monthly annually there's technicians that do that and these people make really really good money stupid money welders yeah welders yeah people don't understand how much money welders can make yeah um there's so many uh i guess you want to call it blue collar careers especially that's not exposed to black people Mm -hmm. uh, we said we're going to do more and talk more about it, which we can. Uh, that's just a lot of work trying to find, like, ways for people to get into it. But look into this stuff. Anything anything that operates, works, or does something, there's somebody behind it that has to maintain it. Yep. Simple as that. That's why the trade should be getting the most money in the world, because we make the world go round. If it wasn't uh, for your plumbers, electricians, and all them other guys – Nothing would work. These dudes, this one uh, elevator dude, me and him was talking, and he was <clears throat> talking about he's uh, buying another boat. So I was like, what boat you got? You know, he was just, he's like, yeah, man, I was doing this, and he was talking about the wiring on it. I could relate to it because, you know, I was an electrician, and he was saying how the marine wiring and stuff and how he finds it better if he uses use this outdoor and how it mm -hmm. works better, salt water don't get to it. I said, man, what kind of boat you got? He was like, oh, well, this is the one I got right now. This had to be a four or five hundred thousand dollar boat. Yeah. When I seen it, I said, "Like that's a ship." Yeah. That ain't no boat. 
Mm. He's like, yeah, I think I don't know if I'm gonna keep this one and get another one or sell this one and, and get another. I'm like, and you got the money to do that. This ain't no sin. He ain't single. He got kids. He got a mm-hmm. wife. You know, <laughs> like. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's yeah. It's it's definitely important. Okay, I just bought some time. Now I'm not late, so now we good. I'm uh, uh I'm right now. I've been thinking about going and learning more about electrical work because I've been seeing all these government contracts and they be needing electricians to do certain things. But man, I've been out of it too long. Every time I do something to my house and I got to crawl, I'm like, yeah, I'm, 40, I'm, happens, big, I'm big 42. That happens to me too. <laughs> I'm like, nah. I, I do something let me working. Dig, let me above dig. My head. Yo, your shoulder burn. Oh, I'm, like, I'm like, look, this this uh, this uh, social media content creator influencer. It doesn't spoil me. I don't know if I can. <laughs> Major soul. Yeah, but if you're young, get into it. I'm, you can make a whole lot more. Look, you can make a whole lot more money than I'm making yeah, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Off this podcast, yeah. too. I, when I when I speak to you all no, about no, trades, yeah. <laughs> we spending <laughs> money. Yeah, <laughs> when I speak to y'all about trades, it's really for you all to tell your children yeah. to uh to get into the trades because I know your kids are like they don't know what to do. They don't know if they want to go to college. They don't know what they want to get into. The trades would be something to do while you're thinking about what you want to do. So you get out of um, high school, five years in the trades, you're going to be 22, 23 or whatever, making 35 to 40 an hour at a 20, being 23 or 24. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, that's crazy. And a lot of them teach you. Yeah, well, yeah, they're going to teach you. The uh, apprenticeship is... Yeah, the apprenticeship. They're going to teach you, get, you and show you how to do it all. And then you have the choice to say, you know what? I'm going to go for my license. Yeah. Or I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to be a journeyman. Or I'm going to be a superintendent. And then if you want to be an entrepreneur, start your own company. Start your own it. company. Hey, but anyway. Man, if they would have had us doing this, think about y- y'all, especially men. Think about... Goose, I y- got to go. Oh, I thought you said you weren't late. No, okay. I said I was late. Now, I'm not late now if I leave now. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll finish that later on. But anyway, you can find your boy on IG. That's G-O-O-L-Z-B-Y, Building With Goose on YouTube. And my wife at Underrepped. No, my merch. I'm coming with some hats. Merch at underreptmerch.com. And my wife on YouTube at um, Underreported. At underreported, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hey, y'all can find me on Instagram at Marcus on the Gram, Facebook at Marcus on the Book, TikTok at Tank Don't Talk. Y'all can find my building body butter. It's called Man Shit. And you can go to m a n s h y t dot com and check that out. And if you're listening, you can watch this on uh, YouTube, Taxley TV. Let us tell it. If you're watching, you can listen to this across all podcast streaming platforms. And uh, you can get on Goose's Patreon at patreon dot com slash Patreon. Dang. I'm not a lawyer, but you can get on my Patreon <laughs> at patreon.com slash that chick angel. Ours is five dollars a month. You can get on there, you can get these five podcasts. Anyway, I'll holler back at y'all, fam. Y'all have a good one. Yep.